Hi friends, it's Kaylee Bird. Welcome back to my studio. You know I'm always thrilled to have you. So today's video is chalk full of information. I am really excited about this because I do a lot of videos about how to do specific things, but this video is going to be something that you can apply to all of your work and hopefully make everything more realistic. Yes, yeah, so this video is how to paint your paintings in, oh, I do oil, but acrylical work too, more realistically. So I'm going to be referencing a number of my other videos to get a little bit more specific. You'll see that either up on the screen or links down below. And then I'm gonna give you a nice checklist of things to go through every time you're making a painting to make it as realistic as possible. All that information, all my references, all my links, that checklist is also gonna be on a corresponding blog post linked down below. And that way you don't have to take any notes and you've got everything all laid out in a nice neat little package. So pretty please, if you learned something today, make sure you pop that subscribe button because it really, really helps grow my channel and then make sure you come back for all the artsy goodness. I hope you guys learned so much today because I've actually been working on this little checklist for like probably almost a year to make sure that I was going to get every single great idea of how to make your paintings realistic. So I hope you love it today, guys. Mwah! Thank you for being here. So this is the painting that I will be using for the most part today to demonstrate how to paint realistically. As you know, I've been doing my 3D paintings with acrylic resin layers, so this one is definitely not finished. But I'm very grateful for Shauna, a fellow artist who has done this collaboration with me and is allowing me to use one of her beautiful self-portraits. Which leads me to the first point of creating anything realistically, and that is you need to start off with a very clear reference image. You will not be able to fabricate or create any detail that is not contained within that reference image if you want it to be realistic. So do yourself a favor and don't use anything that has terrible lighting or is out of focus or is not genuinely how you want your finished piece to look. And from that clear reference image, of course, you need to create an equally strong drawing to begin with. If you are curious about how to improve your drawing before painting or how to transfer your drawing onto your linen or canvas, check around for links. I have videos that go into specifics on both of those techniques. Now, again, this is another tip before you even start painting, and that is to Take the time to lay out the full palette of everything you need and mix all the proper colors and many of them. Don't skimp out on your time here because this is going to be reflective in your entire work. I like to have at least five or six different hues in my skin tone gradients, for example. Maybe I'll have three or four in a cloth gradient or five or six in a hair gradient. It just kind of depends. Now I will start off with a gradient of course, and then slightly alter, change, make things warmer, cooler as I'm painting. But I start off with all the colors that I need and plenty of them. You see my palette. I do not skimp on my paints at all. And I'm always grateful for this because what will happen is if you run out of certain paints or you're trying to skimp, you're going to wind up overcompensating in some way and your colors are not going to look correct. So take the time, Get the best paints you can, lay them out, and make the most beautiful palette you can create. And if you need any help mixing your own skin tones, I have videos on both lighter skin tones as well as more melanin rich. Once you've got your strong image and your beautiful colors, you are ready to start painting. And this is important. I'm going to say this more than once. Take your time. This is not a race. If you want to do something delicate and beautiful, guess what? You need to have small, direct strokes and you want to use the correct size brush. Don't use a brush that's way too big for the area you're trying to fill in or one that's too small because then it will start to look too busy. It's going to take you too much time and be annoying. If you notice, even on just this set of lips alone, I'm using at least three different brushes and this doesn't even include the teeny tiny highlights that I go in and add later. So just because it is all one surface does not mean it will take all one brush shape. Even when I'm filling in a single surface area, I might use multiple brushes depending on the hue of the paint that I'm applying or just because I'm trying to get the correct strokes. Don't be afraid to use as many brushes as you need for any surface or area. 
Now going hand in hand with using the correct size brush for the job at hand, make sure that you are paying attention to the surface of the material that you are actually painting. Here I am painting a sheer lace veil. I'm going to treat this very differently than I would a hand or a piece of cloth that is not translucent. You want to pay attention to how whatever material it is falls on or with or is the subject and you want to use strokes and the direction that this material or object is sitting or made. Think about it. Don't go against the grain. You want to go with the grain and make sure that you take the time Again, go slowly, correct yourself. This is all a learning process. Every new material painted is a new challenge. So go back and forth, take away, add to it. Take your time. Using multiple layers is also an excellent way to get realism. Often we need to start with some sort of broad or basic lay-in area and then later on go in with more refined brush strokes and a larger range of tonal values in order to refine whatever the subject is we're working on. Sometimes it is beneficial to do these layers with some dry time in between and other times you can layer wet on wet. It really just matters what the material is that you are trying to depict. Now this last step I think can be the most challenging to some artists and the most rewarding to others. Personally I find it a bit of both. But this last step, the more you do it the less you will need to and that is take the time to co continue correcting your mistakes until you achieve the desired look. This is important because sometimes we wind up getting a bit frustrated, things aren't going the way we want to, and wind up just kind of slapping some paint down and being like, okay, that part is finished. I'm going to move on to another area of the painting that I'm finding more exciting, less difficult, more rewarding. But don't do that to yourself, guys. You're not going to learn anything unless you push, push, push through and continue correcting yourself. I do not let any area of my painting just sit idly by. Every single part I do the very best to my abilities and I will go back in and back in even if that means putting my painting away for a little bit, letting it dry completely, starting over, trying new paints, whatever it takes, I am willing to go back and keep correcting and keep correcting and that is the same with the drawing too. And the thing is is that as I said earlier every new material, every new surface is a different challenge. For example this is one of the first times I've ever done a successful painting of a tattoo on flesh and I had a really hard time doing this especially in the past and this time I was determined to get it right so I just figured I'm gonna do whatever it takes I'm gonna bring out whatever materials I'll have a q-tip and everything just to blend it into the skin and make it look as realistic as possible and at the end I'm so glad that I did and now next time I try to do a tattoo on somebody's skin I'm gonna have a lot more knowledge and it's gonna come a lot easier and last but not least folks my last little bit of advice for making something realistic. If you're trying and trying and something just isn't working out for you, give it a break. Sometimes our brain will tend to work through issues or whatever when we're not even realizing it. So either put that painting away for a week or maybe just focus on a different part of it, a different section. I am giving you permission to step away from the painting. I know that seems counterproductive, but trust me, it's not. I cannot tell you how many times I've had some frustrating issue and I literally just walked away and somehow the back of my little birdie brain was working without me even realizing it. And when I came back, things just sort of worked out and it was much smoother. So give yourself permission, give yourself time to mentally work through things. 
And if you really need a little extra help, don't forget I am available for art mentoring via webcam. Check down below, I have a teeny tiny little application process to make sure we'd be a good fit, but I'd be more than happy to help you with any techniques, art business advice, or portfolios for school. Thanks for being here, guys. Make sure you pop that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.